right. Today um, we want to talk about informative speeches and uh, give you a little more detail as to what, how it's laid out. We, we kind of did, in our last segment, we went through and talked about how to put the speech together, come up with your main point. Well, today we're going to show. I'm going to show you how to lay these out in an informative way. And what's interesting is I'm an avid learner. I, I love to learn. I love to read. If you walked into my home, you would see shelves and shelves of books. And I've been reading since I was very young. And so for me, it's you know just kind of what I do. And so, uh, as I've gone on and, and done more research and such, I've, I've found that when I research one subject, sometimes I end up with another one. And, and what I'm trying to get at here with this is that as you guys determine what your subject matter is going to be, and you've got kind of an idea of what you want to do, I also want you to realize that as you start doing research, you may find that the subject you chose, or whatever avenue you were, in direction you were going to go, I should say, uh, whatever direction you were going to go, you kind of, the research almost takes you to another way. So understand that as you go through. Um, Franklin Adams, he said this, he says, uh, I find that a great part of the information I was, uh, that, uh, is that I have acquired by, was when I looked up something and found something else. That's basically how he said that. So um, understand that, that concept. Also understand that uh, this Chinese proverb, I think, applies to to this as well, what I'm talking about in that. When the student's ready, the teacher will appear. Okay? And so what that means is that you do research, you may find something else come up. So it's kind of just different ways of looking at it and, uh, and so on. And so when it comes to information, I believe that knowledge builds on knowledge. Okay? That's what you're trying to do in an informative speech, you're trying to build on people's knowledge. Not only your own, but your audience. And uh, Socrates said this, he said, the more I learn, the more I learn how little I know. Okay? So, just a couple things there. So let's, what, let's define what informative is. Informative is giving information. That make sense? You're going to be giving information. So when you make an informative speech, it means giving information, or it means that you're being instructive. Okay? You're in some cases you may give out information, and then in other cases you may be instructing someone to do something. And over the ten years that I've been teaching. I've had a variety of subjects taught uh, up in, in the class. And in and, and this one on being instructive, I had a student actually do a presentation on how to tie a shoe. I thought it was very creative. Most people wouldn't have thought of doing it that way. But uh, that's how simple some of these things can be for you. So, understand that. So when we talk about speeches, we're instructing or giving information to an audience. So under, that's what we need to understand there. Uh, why? We describe, we demonstrate, and we explain. We're not trying to convince or change someone's belief. Where purpose comes into play. We talked about purpose last time. So 
So keep this in mind as you're, you're going through this. So your purpose is to give information and then what happens is your audience determines what they're going to do with it. What that means is you may uh, persuade them after you've given them the information that that might happen and it might not. And the reason for that is that different words mean different things to different people. So whatever terminology I'm using, you're going to relate that to what your own experience is. So as you're thinking about your speeches, you need to understand this. And then the individual develops their own meaning from whatever it is. I think that's why we get some confusion sometimes is when we hear something that somebody says, and we say, well, you said that, but that's not what I meant. They'll probably come back and say to you, okay? So, but, and, and meaning is in people. I think I've expressed that before. All right, let's talk about some organizational habits. The most common, and in your handouts, you can follow along here. I have them there for you. Is it number eight? Wait, number 11. Yes, the handout. So, as we organize, the first one and the most popular in informative speeches is organizational. Okay? And when we talk about organizational, what we're trying to do is arrange them in the sequence of time. It's the most common used, and an example of that would be a how to project or explain a schedule. Deal with time, doesn't it? Chronologically. When you're showing someone how to do something, anybody ever bought a table or something from the store and you had to put it together? Or uh, any, any kind of thing? Yeah. You, know, you, you know, put slot A and hole B or whatever, however, you know, however it lists it. Well, you're doing that in an informative speech verbally. How it, how it maps out here. And this is looking at it as a whole. We're not starting with the body. But a chronological speech will start out with an introduction where you'll have an intention statement. You're going to be, make a credibility statement stating some, why, are you, why are you credible in giving this information. And then you have your general or specific purpose. You're going to preview your audience. So the example we used last time, I am going to inform my audience, or I'm going to inform you, in this case, you're not going to say my audience, but you say, I'm going to inform you about snowboarding. And I'm going to do it by talking about its history, the equipment you need, and the places you can go. That's how you would preview it. Credibility statement would be, I've been snowboarding for 10 years. And then, whatever, however you want to get the audience's attention, you, you can choose that. And then you're going to transition into the body of the speech. So you'll say, let's first talk about the history of snowboarding. So you transition in. Then you start out with your main point, which is your history. You're going to talk about subpoint A, subpoint B, subpoint B, whatever things that you're, you're going to use to validate your main point. And then the pattern continues through each of the main points. And then you'll end with the conclusion where you're going to summarize. So you, you'll say, today we've talked about Snowboarding, we've talked about the history of snowboarding, we've talked about equipment, and we've talked about the place you can go. You summarize what you just talked about. You don't have to go back into detail, you just remind them what you went, the points you went through. Then you'll make some concluding remarks. I hope I've given you some good information as far as snowboarding. And in some cases, you may add and say, you know, hopefully this will give you enough information to even go try it. 
So you'll find that informative and persuasive speeches aren't, there's not that fine line between them. All right, the next one is what is called spatial organization. And what spatial organization is by space. You'll, you'll uh, if you have a house over there, house plan, you'll describe a house, if you're just talking about a house, you describe it by its rooms, each of the rooms. So things are organized by space, where they're physically located, and an example of that, obviously, is selling a house and describing each of the rooms. Let's look at the, how it works. So introduction, again, you're, you're putting in your attention, your credibility, your general and specific purpose, your transition, and then you talk about the fir first location or space. And again, sub point A, sub point B, and then sub, and then so on and so forth. Transition on, and then you'll continue that through the rest of the speech. So a little bit different than chronological. This time you're you're, you're forming by space. And then of course the conclusion. Pretty much the same on on all of the the ways you present. Uh, the next one is by topic. So you, what you're doing here is you're arranging things around a logical theme. An example of this, and I shared this with you before, but uh, discrimination can be broken down into age, gender, culture, disabilities, and so on. So you, you do it by topic. You have a main topic, and you break that topic down. Again, introduction, virtually the same. Just, it's kind of, it's just really how you go about choosing to do it. And you transition into the body, and in the body, we take the first category that we're gonna talk about, so maybe age first. And then you go through the points, you transition to the next one and you, you continue that pattern. It's real basic and simple, isn't it? That, there's really not a whole lot of difficulty to this. Once you have your main points that you want to talk about, you're pretty much set. But this is just a way of organizing it. And as you put your speeches together, and I'm gonna, I've given you the handout of the creation worksheet. That's what I want you to use. I want you to use it in your speech. That's what I want you to hand in to me. Because then it will keep it in outline form. The mistake a number of people make is that they'll type out everything that they want to say and then they end up reading their presentation and never look at the audience. And so what I'm trying to do is help you not create that bad habit. Does that make sense? And then of course we conclude much the same. Now, let's talk about citing our sources. What does it mean to cite a source? Give credit where credit's due. Give credit where credit's due, okay? So, if we use a quote, what does that mean? Okay. So, in your speech, you would say what? If you're quoting someone. So and so said this. Okay. According to so and so, blah 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 blah. Okay. You're citing in your speech where that information came from. Versus like at the end just saying, Oh yeah, by the way, I used information from these four people. Right. Right, you want to cite them in the speech. Just not, don't put up a, a PowerPoint that has who, who all you cited. It, it, what you're trying to do is give credibility to yourself, in essence, and say, so-and-so said this, 
according to a recent survey in the Wall Street Journal, blah, 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 blah. Again, credibility. You're just not blurting out information. And so it's, it's very important that you do, do this with when you uh, give your presentations. With each piece of information you give, you have to cite the source and give it at the time of the presentation. So as you're presenting, you use that quote, say it then. Okay? And we've already talked about the example there. So, we've talked about informative speeches, where we give information. We've talked about the patterns of chronological, spatial, and topical. And we've talked about the specifics of each pattern. So, are there any questions on this? It's pretty much simple and laid out, so I just want to make sure you guys are clarified. So far. Okay.